So, of course, at the peak of my witching hour questioning of life, I felt the change I needed was a new hair color. You see, being even mildly tired and deciding to play around with bleach is a match made in hell. But I did it anyway. Being too far into the whole permanent mistake thing, I put dye on that same morning. The box said blue, and I was prepared for it to turn a horrible shade of green just in time for Halloween, but no. Even when I prepare for the worst, the gods love to take me by the ankles. Ah! What the... again? Yeah, but hey, it's mostly purple. Did you cut it as well? What's going on with the... It feels like straw, Micah. Gee, Salem, I couldn't tell. I have some oil somewhere that should help. Let me go find it. By the way, have you seen my glasses anywhere? On top of your head? So they are. Good afternoon, Crescent. Are you hungry? Don't believe his lies. He's already been fed. You just want attention, don't you, Crescent? Some of this should help with at least part of the damage. Can't guarantee miracles, though. Right. Thanks. Hey, you have weekends off as well, right? I have the entire time we've lived here. In my defense, I normally sleep through most of the day. That sounds like a you problem. You remember Bailey's coming around today, right? That's today? We really need to get a calendar. Well, how did you remember? You don't normally remember stuff like that. A little something called the calendar app on your phone. You actually use that thing? Don't most people? You really shouldn't keep your door unlocked like that. You never know who might walk in. Bailey King. He, him. Adopted brother of the previously mentioned Charlie King. I couldn't tell you a lot about him if I really thought about it. One of those people you can't quite place when or how you met. A Labrador you find around every corner as if he's in eight different places at once. Bailey might just be one of the nicest people I've ever met, but he has a nasty habit of breaking in. The front door is locked. Stop jumping the back gate. We can cut you a key. Oh, come on. That's no fun, Salem. How old are you? Twenty-two and a half. Very specifically. What can I say? I'm a specific guy. <coughs> Am I meant to mention the hair? Are we ever? You didn't tell me your brother worked at the convenience store. The one on Main Street? Where are you... Oh, so that's where the new job is, huh? It wasn't quite the surprise I'd thought up about the new job, to say the least. Meet anyone cool? Charlie says there are all sorts of interesting people. You want a drink, Bailey? Sounds great. What are the plans? Who says we have to leave the house? Okay, so, bowling it is. What's wrong with golf? Who plays normal golf? Not even crazy golf. It's mini-golf? Everyone loves mini-golf. Great, miniature pain. You scared I'll beat you? At bowling? Your hand-to-eye skills are so bad it's painful. Well, at least you know you won't come in dead last. Oh, now you're in for it. Salem, we're doing bowling. <laughs> I'll grab the keys. You've got to admit, that was pretty cool. It was embarrassing. Who knew it was possible? I'd call that a talent. Do you think we're banned from the bowling alley now? We definitely were. For those of you who weren't aware, it is totally possible to shatter a bowling ball. And the floor below it. And maybe pull down part of the ceiling while you're at it. What I'm telling myself is that the bowling ball already had a crack in it when I picked it up. We gave quite the light show with all the sparks. Naturally, we were asked to leave. It was fun while it lasted, but hey, can't come dead last in a competition that never ended. I've never seen so many vegetarian options before. See, I told you you'd like this place. I wish I could read. Isn't the colored background meant to help? Not as much as you'd think it would. Probably doesn't help that you're stressed. Gee, thanks, Sherlock. 
Well, I'll just tell you what doesn't have milk in it, and we can go from there. I'll just have fries. You always say that. It's pretty much a guarantee that a place will have them, and that they won't have it out to poison me. It's a win-win. Bonus points, I can avoid dealing with a stupid menu. Foolproof, clearly. Since when do you care? I caught you eating an entire tub of ice cream by yourself last week. Hey, that's between me and the cat. You keep feeding Crescent ice cream and it'll be between you and the gods. It's not my fault your cat goes face first into any container he sees. Ugh, a spider. Where? Up! <laughs> See, this is why I don't go public places with you. Sorry. You guys okay down there? Oh, shut up, Salem. Whatever you say, Micah. Not like we can get kicked out of the restaurant as well. Should have gotten takeaway. Do you want help up? I'm just gonna lay here for a bit longer. But you're glad we sat inside now, huh? There's something about laying on a floor that helps put thoughts in place. What, I can't be angry at the world all of the time. Sometimes you need to lay on the floor and pretend you could feel the world move beneath you. After a day like today, the comfortable silence can only last so long. There's room on the sofa, you know. You don't both have to lay on the floor like that. It's more comfortable like this. You keep thinking that, Salem. We should lay like this in the rain sometime. It's hard to catch just rain and not a whole storm situation, but when we do. I don't think it's a good idea to take a sofa out in the rain. Without the sofa, no, you would be laying on the ground with us. If we attach wheels to it, we could ride it down the hill. An unstoppable force meets an unmovable object. Is the unstoppable force us or any cars we might pass? I'd be more worried about trucks. You guys are the worst. Just be glad none of us are engineers, then we'd definitely be unstoppable. Do you think you'll ever be lucky? <laughs> lucky enough to keep this job for more than a week? I sure hope so. No. No. That's not what I meant, Micah. I know, Bailey. And I'm... not sure. It's nice to think about, huh? Be able to go somewhere without the knowledge that I'm gonna ruin it for everyone? Sounds pretty carefree to me. You don't ruin anything. You keep us on our toes just as much as we do yours. Everybody makes mistakes every now and again, just because you make a few more. I think we all know it's a little more than mistakes at this point. We all have our weaknesses. Spiders. Ah, yes, how could we forget? All spiders are out to get Bailey specifically. They're creepy, crawly things. Nothing should watch you from afar like that with so many eyes. And some of them are capable of killing humans, you know. And pets. Do you not worry about your cat? Crescent's fine. He complained if something was actually wrong. Speaking of Bailey's weaknesses... Hey, watch it. Micah, I'm not sure if you've heard, but apparently there's a new frequent customer at the bakery. Oh? I've heard they timed their visits perfectly around Bailey's shift hours. Salem... The guy with the locks who's good with eyeliner? Tends to look somewhere between a goth and a unicorn? That's them. Do you have any idea what their name is? Who wants to watch a film? <laughs> Real smooth, Bailey. One day, your folding chair will fold you. So think about your furniture's feelings before you throw out your ex-husband's favourite stool. In today's episode, you heard Luca Miller as Micah Oak, Teo M. Shin as Salem Alice, and Felix Bozowski as Bailey King. Mixed Bad Luck is written and produced by Cory MJ, and credits are read by Kit Patterson. Thank you for listening. Note to future Nix.
Do you ever feel the world slipping through your hands? Not like sand, it's not steady enough for that. It's like, it's like you've been pirouetting non-stop for days, for years, head snapping back to that focus point. Your momentum carrying you round and round, pivot, 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 and then all of a sudden you realize you lost sight of your spot. Your body's moving faster than your head. Any moment you might twist it right off at the neck and the world is just a blur of color and sound and it's so loud, but it's like you're listening to it through water. Does that make sense? I started reading these monologues for fun. They're just a little spooky, you know? Something silly and spooky to practice my acting with, to spend time with Bella. But someone doesn't want me to read them. Like, really doesn't want me to read them. And I can't help wondering, where did they come from? Who wrote them? What do they mean? How far are they willing to go? How far am I? The Attic Monologues is an urban fantasy horror podcast releasing the last Wednesday of every month. Find us on your podcatcher of choice or wander into someplace abandoned and listen for a voice on the wind.